In the name of Jesus, we thank you for another opportunity to bring the word of life unto your people tonight. Thank you for what you have been doing on this altar. Thank you for your move. Thank you for the power of God that has been at work. Thank you for the things you did yesterday. Thank you for what you have done this morning. And thank you for what you are going to do again tonight. We release ourselves unto you, Holy Spirit. Do that which only God can do. And let the glory be yours forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Give Jesus a clap of praise, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for the opportunity given unto us by the pastorate who decided to call us all the way from Akure. And uh, we've been here since yesterday. They have taken good care of us more than what we expect. Let's give a round of applause for the people that are there. Praise the Lord. And uh, so let's move on to our next meeting today. Today is the day two, and tomorrow is the third day and the last day of this meeting. Let me start from where we started yesterday. I'm just going to roll on, and then we'll get to where we didn't get to yesterday. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, talked about the anointing. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. The Bible said, And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So I've been emphasizing the role and the power of the anointing to work miracles, signs, and wonders in the life of people since yesterday. From verse 27, it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off, 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 off thy shoulder. So whatever has been a weight and burden in your shoulders, the Lord will take it off, off, off in the name of Jesus. And his yoke from off, off, off your neck. Hallelujah. Burden taken off from you and then whatever is a yoke broken off your neck somebody say off you didn't hear me say off say off say off now if somebody was carrying a weight before and the weight was taken away he's been taken off you will feel the lightness after the weight is gone. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, tonight, it doesn't matter what the devil has been doing. It matters what God wants to do tonight. Praise God. And what God intends to do is to take off some burden, some yoke, some problems off people's life. I see that word, off. Somebody say off. 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 It will go off and away from your life because the anointing came. That's what makes the difference in people's life. The presence of the power of God, the anointing of God, is the yoke removing, body removing, yoke destroying power of God. Hallelujah. And then we read Luke chapter 4 from verse 14. Just trying to go over our message of yesterday. Luke 4, we read from verse 14. And the Bible says in verse 14, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. He's been in the same church before. This synagogue where Jesus came for meeting, he has been there before. But now, he came now with the power of God. Same person, but different anointing. Hallelujah. Same preacher, but different anointing. Ah, yeah, yeah. Is somebody hearing me? You see, you may not be sick, oh, and then you may not need healing, oh, but you will have anointing. By the time this three days program is over, a measure of anointing you have not experienced before will go with you in the name of Jesus. I'm not just talking. 
and ministering. And when ministration is going on, life is going on. You understand what I'm saying? Somebody is having an exchange from the level you used to operate as a minister. You are moving to another level. Because Jesus came back to the same church. But the Bible says he returned with power. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your return back to wherever you come from will be with power. Your return back to your duty will be with power. Your return back to your office will be with power. Because power comes from on high. The power of God is the most important thing, you know. Uh, Smithy Gusworth said, give me all the world. He stays in Europe, but his ministry touches the world. He said, give me all the world full of gold. It cannot equate the anointing of God being on your life for just a day. What the anointing will do in your life when all the money of the world cannot do. I pray for somebody here today. I don't know who I'm talking about. You are returning with power. He returned with power. He will return to your office with power. You return to your duty post with power. You return to that assignment you are doing with power. You return to that job with power. You return back to that family with power. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And there went out a fame of fame throughout all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogue, being glorified of all. What kind of fame? A fame of something beginning to happen in his life that has not happened before. Praise God. They knew him to be carpenter's son. They knew him to be the carpenter. But when he came back, it was not the job of a carpenter he was doing. In fact, before, he used to be a lay reader. Other people are the preachers. He would just read the Bible for them to come and preach. So as he came that day, they gave him Bible as usual. Read the Bible, let the real pastor come and preach. But the anointing came to him. Praise God. Because he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he started ministering with us. He said, today, this thing shall be it shall be done. This scripture shall be fulfilled in your ears. So verse 18 said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken uh, hearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and re recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he gave the book to them and sat down. And everybody was looking at him. But the anointing shifted to his direction. And something started happening in his life from that day. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So what makes miracle happen? What makes healing happen? What makes deliverance happen? Is the anointing. And that anointing is here with us. The power of God is here with us. We have not come empty. We have come with the presence of God, the power of God. And when we pray and minister with that anointing, something happens that is beyond ordinary. Things will happen in your life that will go beyond science in the name of Jesus. Beyond the ability of science. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Acts 10, 38. Still talking about the power of God and the ability of this, our great God. 10, 38. And now God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So who anointed Jesus? God. What was Jesus using to do ministry? Anointing. But where did he get the anointing from? God. God anointed Jesus. So Jesus needed anointing to operate. So he was not operating as son of God, as special person but a person that became anointed. That's the difference. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? He was anointed with Holy Ghost and with power. Somebody said, um, what's making all these things that happen in your church to happen? He was asking another man of God. Oh, the man of God said, it's Holy Spirit. He said, no, I want the Holy Spirit. I saw clue one bed. Ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, it's the Holy Spirit. He said, no. <laughs> so it means that person believed that this is more than Holy Spirit. Well, it's really the Holy Spirit. Praise God. But there is a dimension of power. 
you may receive Holy Ghost baptism and speak in tongues and still don't operate power. You didn't get me. It's like you have visa, but you didn't travel. Okay? Anybody that sees visa in your hand knows that you have all it takes now to enter into nations. But you have it, but you didn't go. The realm of the spirit is a real realm. It's not a fake realm. Everything operating in the spirit realm is real. But somebody may be a born-again Christian but never experienced anything in that dimension. So everything about his life is too natural. You are collecting salary, I'm collecting salary. You are working, I'm working. When it is not good for the government, it's not good for you, it's not good for me too because all of us are not being paid. And so since last year that we have not received payments, we've not been able to do anything fantastic in the family. We are just managing, praying that God will do something with this country. So if your own does not have anything different from their own, your Christianity doesn't show anything better than their own. Praise God. Praise the Lord. But the anointing gives another dimension to life that is beyond what people can explain. That's the anointing. The supernatural presence of God brings the supernatural ability of God into play more than what our brain can do. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Miracle is what is not expected to happen, but it does happen. All the same. It's not expected. No normal whatever expect this to happen, but it happened. That's what you call a miracle. It shows God came and his power manifested. John chapter 14 verse 12. I read that again yesterday. I'm still going there today. John 14, 12. The Bible says, uh, Jesus Christ was talking here. I said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. So you see, God gives us ability to operate at the level at which Jesus operated. When he said, the works that I do, you shall do. Hallelujah. And then now move a little further to the level of not only what you can do. I mean, what I have done. You'll be able to do what I have done, but you do greater works. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So first, we must study what has God done through Jesus Christ in the Bible and up, begin to believe God for the operations of the same power of God in the life of Jesus to operate in our lives as ministers, as ones that are called by God. Praise God. He gave us that. When people say you should not expect to receive anything at that level because you are not like Jesus, how can you expect what happened in Jesus' life to happen in your life? Are you Jesus? But Jesus himself said, what I do, you will do. And greater work than this, you will do. Why do you now think it's too much for me to do what he has done? He is not here, but his work must continue. So somebody must be there to do it. Praise God. He started it. The things that he began to do. He began it, but he didn't complete it. He said, we should finish the rest. Oh my God. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? David destroyed Goliath. But that was all he did. The rest, he just commanded the children of Israel. The agreement is if I win him, his people becomes our slave. If he wins me, our people becomes his slave. Now that I have won him, let him go. Just go and begin to take all of them. They are now your slave and servant. Praise God. So Jesus conquered the devil and gave us the victory. We are not conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Because we didn't fight. He fought the battle. He gave us the victory. And said, now go and live in that victory. And the devil now wants to come and stop my victory. No, I won't allow him. Because God has given me victory over you. Even before I came into Christianity, it's already settled. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I enter into it. That's why knowledge is very important. I don't just pray for people. I take them through the scriptures. So that if they anoint and operate, it should operate based on the word of God. So if you forget me, you won't forget what I read to you. You won't forget the scriptures I gave you. Because the power is in the word. You release out the power from the word. Hallelujah. 
the ability of God is included in the written word of God. But the written word must become active word, living word, practice word. Mm. Are you getting what I'm saying? He read from Isaiah 61. Everybody has been reading the same Isaiah. But the day he read, he said, this thing I have read will happen today. So he brought it from the book to reality. Praise God. Because the anointing that will make it happen was already in operation. Now, the same scripture has been there. He didn't read that at age 12 to bring it to operation because he was not yet anointed. If he were not anointed, he cannot activate what is written. Ah, yeah, yeah. Praise God. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? He need the anointing to be able to make Bible real or else you'll be reading it like Bible study. Bible study outline. Oh, my God. Is somebody hearing me? Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nicodemus came to Jesus. John chapter 3. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. He said, Master, <laughs> let me go take you there. John 3, from verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, uh, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Hallelujah. The person talking, Nicodemus, is not just an ordinary man. He's a teacher himself. Rabbi. He called Jesus Rabbi. Teacher. He himself is a rabbi. Jewish rabbi. Hello? But when teacher see teacher, teacher bow. He's a teacher. So another teacher. He said, teacher, you are sent from God. You are a man sent from God. Ah, these things that you are doing, nobody can do them except God be with him. That testimony is awesome to have come from the mouth of a teacher of the world also. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? And when we read, I think I read it yesterday. I read it to you yesterday. All right. Uh, look at the same chapter 3. <clears throat> <laughs> Glory to God. Verse 5. So Jesus answered, said, Verily, verily, I said, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom. Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you that you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth not, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell when it cometh. And with that grace, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered, Are thou a master in Israel, and knowest not these things? That verse 10, I said we should read it in other translations. And by the time they read it in other translations yesterday, they came with the conclusion from different scriptures that that teacher, Nicodemus, has been a scholar of the Bible long time a great scholar of the scripture before jesus was born he has been a teacher when was jesus born 30 years ago that man talking there may be up to 70. praise god and he has been reading the same isaiah many times they can read isaiah off without looking at the bible they read it pharisees can quote the bible for you without looking at the bible praise god so if this man knows the bible but what he knows is different from what God is doing in your hand is more than this reading Bible. Praise God. Ah, I don't know who I'm talking to today. From today, God will begin to do some strange things in your life in the name of Jesus. Things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, that has not come to the understanding of men. That when they look into the books, they say, we can't find this one. I will begin to do them in the name of Jesus. Ah. Zechariah, Zechariah chapter, chapter 4, verse 6. six. Zechariah, Zechariah 4, 6. It's not, not by, by power, power, not by mind, but by the, by the Spirit, Spirit of God. God. Says the Lord. God will walk things in our means that is not by power, it's not by mind. 4, 6. And then and he answered and spake unto me, saying, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by mind, nor by power, 
but by my spirit, says the Lord. When you talk of might and power here, you are not talking of physical ability of man. Praise God. Say, not by army, physical army. You look at the center reference there. Not by mind. Say, not by physical army. So, not by physical ability. Not by brain. Not by skill. Not by education. But by the anointing. By the anointing. By the anointing. By the anointing. The supernatural power of God works beyond science. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Beyond science. We need to have that understanding of God for us to cooperate with the power of God when it's at work. Mark chapter 5. I read this also yesterday. Mark chapter 5. And that was where I stopped. But I'm not stopping there today. I'm going further. Mark chapter 5 from verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood, 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing himself that virtue was gone out of him, turned about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude throng in thee, and seest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that has done this thing. And the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. Praise God. Now when you look at that story, and you add the one of Matthew, the one of Luke, add everything together, you see that there are some processes that led to the miracle of this woman. And those processes and principles can be applied for anybody that needs a miracle from God. Praise the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I tried to enumerate them for us yesterday, and I'm going to do that again today before I go further from yesterday's message. I said she heard about Jesus. Write that down. She heard as step number one. For a miracle to happen, to be a biblical miracle and a supernatural miracle that is not magic and is not demon miracle, it's miracle by God. You first need the word of God. What did you hear? What stirred up your faith? What made you believe? Hallelujah. She heard about Jesus. Somebody must have told her some things about Jesus. And it's not likely to just be, Jesus is our Savior, he will save you. No, what he needed at that time is not salvation. He needed healing. So he must have had something related to that ability of God to heal the sick. For her to have faith for that kind of healing. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ah. Uh, a young man called me all the way from uh, Abuja. I was going through some kind of sickness that required a high level treatment in the hospital. And he himself is a pastor in deeper life. And not only that, a businessman that had you no know, school, you know, secondary and primary school. When you have those kind of things, you, you flow in money. In Abuja, not in the local village. Are you getting what I'm saying? But in the hospital, where he was going through intensive care unit with oxygen being passed to his system, he called me from that bed. He said, sir, I know you are a man of God. Are you getting me? And then I know you have healing anointing. Pray for me. They said my lungs and many other organs are not working well. But I know that God has part, spare part in heaven. So there will be lungs there. You are a man of God. Pray for me. I must not die. <laughs> I said, you're not going to die in Jesus' name. But then, I need God to tell me what to pray. So I prayed in the spirit a little. And God gave me a word for him. He said, call his spirit back from the region of death. Zone of death to the zone of life. A person is talking to me in the hospital. He didn't say, please, I'm about to die. Pray for me that I don't die. 
He said, they say I have lungs problem. Pray for lungs. But when I talked to God, God said, call the spirit back from the zone of death back to the zone of life. Okay? So I prayed in the name of Jesus. Brother so so so, pastor so so, whatever. Come back from the region of death. You are not dying now. Come to the zone of life. Now, when somebody is at the region of death, even doctors, we know that the life is no more going up. The life is ebbing out. It's already in the zone of death. It's just when we leave that local. Are you getting what I'm saying? But then, when God arrests the situation and turns your direction back, you will start from where you are starting from. But then, you are no more going down. It's rising up. It means it's coming back to the zone of life. That's what I have in my mind when I pray that prayer. That whatever is happening to you, you it will not result in death. You are coming out. So, second, 24 hours exactly, I called him. He didn't pick my call. Then, later, maybe the second day or so, he called me. He said, it's getting better. Thank you, Pastor. God is hearing your prayer. The thing is improving. I said, okay. And then again, for like two days, he didn't call me. So, the time he would call me later, I was already on my way to another town to go and preach. I was in a vehicle. Somebody was driving me. Another pastor was beside him. So, I was in the vehicle. When he called, I picked the call. But because of, you know, when you are on the road, not everywhere will have network. So, we're not able to complete. Later, I called again. So, by the time the call came through, he said, ah, pastor, <laughs> I died yesterday. When somebody's giving testimony that I died yesterday, you know, miracle has happened already. How did it happen, local? Praise God. <laughs> are you here? You want to say, ah, I died yesterday. I said, what are you talking about? Ah. He said, my spirit came out of the body. I saw my family around my bed and the doctor. Then I saw my spirit going out and he came out of the hospital. I was going away. Praise God. He said, but wherever he wants to enter, they say, no road. <laughs> Father, when you have to enter another place, no way. <laughs> they didn't allow the spirit to enter. So he came back to the body. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> the spirit came back to the body. Then when I came into the body, that's when the people now started saying, OTG, OTG. And that's how everything started turning right. Everything about lungs, liver, whatever, who can were restored. In fact, he wanted them to disturb him the same day. When you know, no, no, I should not observe there. We are still <laughs> because eventually didn't need any extra lungs, no extra liver, no extra anything. God has restored life back. Praise God. <laughs> You know something funny? So, the young man that was driving me, you know, said, Baba, hmm. Praise God. And one of the miracles behind that man's recovery is that he knows who to call. It's not that he's not a Christian. It's not that he's not a pastor. You understand what I'm saying? But at that junction, you need a serious miracle. Come now, now, now. Praise God. And when he call you, pray, God answer. Ah, say so if he has called somebody with building anointing, <laughs> not healing anointing. Ah, block at this event. Because any other anointing from the Praise God. Praise God. Did you hear me? It's anointing that makes the difference in the life of a man. The other young man heard about it. Another one, part of the pastor, some damn it. That one said, hmm. It is that prayer that closed the door. <laughs> when he said he, he went to enter somewhere, they did not allow him to enter. That word has closed all doors. This guy can die. Nobody must give him entrance into the realm of death. He should be sent back to the realm of life. Who am I talking to here? Are you hearing what God is saying here tonight? Death can't take you now. Amen. Not now. Because the power of life is in the word of God. And that word is coming unto you now. You shall not die. You shall live to declare the words of the Lord in the land of the living. Praise God. Are you hearing? I went to pray for somebody in the hospital in Akure. It was the pastor of his church. 
that said, Pastor, follow me. We need to go and pray for somebody, one of my members in the church, I mean the hospital. And we got to in intensive care unit, ICU. In fact, this one is, maybe there's anything more than ICU. Because <laughs> the place where they put this man is very close to mortuary. <laughs> so that this, uh, distance to Nepal. <laughs> He was having HIV AIDS at high level. The AIDS has killed the wife already. So he's already at high stage in his body. So the pastor said, we should go and pray. I got there. I said, Pastor, may I just pray? And I said, as an evangelist. I prayed fast, fast. Bah, bah, bah. But the pastor was wiser. Praise God. He said, we have prayed for you. But I will give you one scripture. One scripture. He brought it out from Psalm 118 and said, You shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. Gave the man the scripture. The man said, Ah, the way I'm feeling now, I don't think I can quote all this to you. The pastor said, No problem. Say, Maybe you are talking with us now. But I cannot love you. So, So, I will say, I will say, when I have rest, talk about about on Tishe there. Sha, we have rest. Not, we have rest. To back pay back pay. I shall not die. Praise God. So the pastor said, "You keep your confession. I will keep my intercession. We will come out of this problem." Hey. Keep saying that word. I will keep praying for you. It's a combination. Oh no, no, she has sorrow. You want my answer? You told so your father. He me have pray for him. My brother, this man came out of the problem. One from that section. One move where Lossi, I see you, whatever, male medical, finally outpatient. Come and walo shoshu. Praise God. Later, no, three, three months. Later, six months. Later. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God! It was a notch in church before the problem came. He came back and started standing back in this other position. Wow. That is the ability of God. The power of God. The anointing of the Lord. The supernatural power of God can bring somebody from death zone back to life zone. Even if they have written and signed that he's dead, they can cancel what they wrote. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Is somebody hearing me? I prayed for a woman many years ago. This one is long. I was in a Sharon, a village where I started ministry. And then a CSC pastor brought this person from Orioke. said, stay with this man of God in the village. I'll come and be looking at you once in a while there. And um, I used to have all night prayers. So when it was time for the all night, we will gather, we will pray in the night and everybody will go. Even if somebody is sick, is there, we will pray for them. But this, in between the night and the time we start the prayer, I saw a revelation about her, about the lady they just brought. The way the lady looks like skeleton. The issue of AIDS has not become common like this, so we don't even know the name of the disease. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? But whatever makes this man to be emaciated, this woman like this, but you will see that she has a shade of somebody that has been beautiful before. Because if you are so sick and lean, like skeleton, and you still look like this, what would have happened? Ah. The mother alone was the only one that was with her in that prayer. But you know what I saw in the realm of the spirit? I saw our local setting in villages where you have kitchen. And the kitchen will just be a place with three, you know, stones. You understand what I'm saying? And then you put your pot on top. That local kind, not your own. I'm not talking of, uh, you know, you people, you don't know all those kind of things. Praise God. <laughs> with those three <laughs> stones like that. So I saw something like that. And on top of it, on the roof side, they now tie something on that top, and there was a uh, uh, bottle. Inside the bottle, 
something liquid. And God now told me, the blood of this woman is inside that place. So they have siphoned all the blood. They keep it there. That's one. Two, his flesh has been divided. So each person has taken their own back home to go and eat. That's the supper. So it's like carcass. They are finishing. Say, but because he came here, I will slap their mouth. I will remove the one they have eaten. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God! Hello? Even if they have cut pieces and they have taken portions for everybody to take your own home, God say, I will slap their mouth. They will vomit what they have eaten. And they will bring it together. And that blood will cut it off. It will come back into the body of this woman and it shall live. Who am I talking about here? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Or is somebody online hearing me? This is a very serious matter. I don't just give testimony for testimony's sake. Whatever condition you are now, and they have written you off, God will take that off your neck in the name of Jesus. That death sentence, God cancel it this hour in the name of Jesus. And this lady... After that prayer that night, so by the time I got to the all night, we prayed a little. I started praying for different people that have need, and I called her. I said, I saw something about you. I prayed for her. I said, your life is bad. Don't worry. She can't eat before for days. So she started taking tea, pap, and gradually. Before she left us for like a week, the flesh has come back. Everything has become normal. Praise God. But only the mother stayed with her at that time. But God will restore the life back. Your life will be restored in the name of Jesus. He said, I will restore health unto you. You remember we read that yesterday in Jeremiah. I will restore health. Even if the health is gone. But God can restore it back. A lot of things are happening through this weekend. And your life will never remain the same in Jesus' name. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is supernatural power in God. It is where you need God that you know that God exists. Some people, they have never seen God work miracles. So to them, they look at miracle. Is it possible? Does God still do that kind of thing now? Ah, it's because you don't need a miracle. That's why you don't know that God is still working one. He's working miracle every day. Praise God. Mm. The supernatural power of God. Is at work in our midst. This woman heard about God through somebody telling him about Jesus Christ, telling her. And then when she heard, she made up her mind what she's going to do about what she has heard. Faith cometh by what? Hearing and hearing and the word of God. Finally, when she got healed, you know Jesus Christ said, Daughter, you can go. Your faith has made you whole. So really, it is not that Jesus is not anointed. But if the anointing is there, and there is no faith coming from the people, they can't receive miracles. He tried to heal people in his own country, in his own town. Nothing happened. He could only minister to a few people with small sicknesses like malaria, headache. Couldn't do serious work. Why? They did not have serious faith in him. They said he's a carpenter's son. So when you call him a carpenter's son, what can a carpenter give to you? Maybe share and maybe coffin. Briefly. Praise God. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? But if you can believe that this is the son of the living God with miracle power in his hand, then you see things happening. Praise God. So he could not. He wanted to know that he would not. He could not. They hindered him. They limited his ability to work miracle in their midst because they didn't believe him. Why we preach the gospel to you? Why we share the scriptures with you? Why we are explaining what he has done before is to increase your faith in him and in his power. When your faith is increasing in him, his power will work without limitation. Praise God. So she had, 
you need to hear. Can I take you to Luke chapter 4? Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. All right. Chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Let's start from verse uh, 16. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. That's Jesus doing his own part. He has prayed. All right. But the part that the people need to do now. And it came to pass on the certain day as he was teaching. And there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And they what? The power of the Lord was present to heal them. He was teaching. People were present who came to hear. But he was teaching them what they need to hear. But then, somewhere along the line, while preaching was going on, teaching was going on, another person came to the meeting. Hey, praise God. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Say, the power of God was present. You know, I didn't go to your own kind of nursing and primary school. Are you getting what I'm saying? I went to a local one, village one. So in those days, we have register. For everybody that is in a class, primary school. And you have your class teacher. We don't have all teachers going to sit in staff room. You have your class. You sit with your class. Praise God. <laughs> and when your students come in the morning or poopy, you call their name one by one. You want to know them by name. So as you are calling them, they will answer, presence. Or present man, this is you understand what I'm saying. And if somebody is not there, there will be silence or oh, come back down, absent. Hey, praise God! <laughs> so it means that at a point in the teaching and the preaching, somebody has came in called the power of God was present. It means if Jesus was teaching, but that power didn't come that day. I teach, I judge, I could judge in Lolly, but I need miracle. Praise God. You can enjoy teaching. And then you have teaching, teaching, teaching 27 points. Then call it re, 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 re. teacher to Dara. Come on, lay way. Once you read Coco, you will see come to buy a sense of bad up balloon lolly. Praise God! But this day, while Jesus was preaching, the power of the Lord came. So it means this one came apart from Jesus. I don't know whether you are getting what I'm saying. Hey, that was one of the testimonies of um, uh, 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 this great man of God. He has gone to be with the Lord now, Babadari was ministering in Lagos, Tafawa Balewa Square, in those days, having crusade day, every night, every night, every night. But one of the nights, Baba, you know, Baba preached in Yoruba, and then he got to a point, she, he cried with a loud voice, that was all. So he's been preaching, no? For many days of the program, but that night, when he said, Any man means here, oh, day, that's all. Every sick person, they were just receiving healing, just like that. Why? The power of the Lord that we heal the people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are ordinary until the power of the Lord comes. But then, because we are conscious of the ability of that God, we keep staying on his word, staying on his word, staying on his word, until his power comes. Are you hearing me? 
<laughs> Just a few weeks ago, first week, when the first week of May now, first week of March, I was having a program in Iju. Iju, Tagbolu, close to Akure. Open air crusade. Seven days, every night, every night, every night. And one of the days, people will, I, every day after I finish salvation message, we call on people that have need of healing, pray for them. Tomorrow we are still going to pray for them. Every day we are praying like that. But when we call for testimony, there was a woman that came for testimony that had five years of deafness in the two ears. Couldn't hear, couldn't talk. And, um, but I remember that when I got to her, I was just laying hand on everybody equally, nothing different. But when I got to her, I didn't ask everybody, what's your problem? So I know what to pray for. I just say, be healed, be healed, be healed, because they look poor. But when I got to her, I had something in me say, touch the ears. So I now put my fingers on the ears, and I pray. I say, Father, be open. And I kept on. We see time. That is her story. Praise God. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? But when she now came and said, the two ears, now she can hear clearly, we tested and found that it is very true. From when has it been happening? Five years. Wow. Praise God. So the one that wants to heal him is the one that said, touch the air of this one. I want you to come forward and Lord him. Touch the air. <laughs> oh, may God's power visit you today in the name of Jesus. You don't have to come to the where you are seated. Faith is what attracts power to you. When the faith of God in you comes, the power of God knows where faith is coming from. And it will get there. Praise the Lord. No limit to what God can do at any time. Five years problem. Just soft like that. I was preaching in all your town. Or your after Badan, you move, or your before the crusade we had in Ibadan. November, I mean November 2019. That one was September that 30 or 29 till October 2nd, 2019. Out of PF, the time I gave them the, um, the information that I would like to come and have a crusade in their midst, and I must have it before November. Because God said, you must do the Oyo one before you do the Ibada one. So I told PFN, I told Khan, it was too close. It's not their fault, really. Because the time I'm coming to come and tell them is like a few months to the day. There's no, all the year is already filled up. But I said, God said, I must do it before Ibadan. And Ibadan is already fixed. And he has told me about them two years before. Just tell me this one now. How are we going to do it? Okay, if this one can do, this one can do. I connected with Baptist. So the Baptist accepted. Praise God. So we did not do open hair. We do inside church. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? But all branches of Baptist came to one location. Ishokun branch. And the whole place was packed filled every day, every day, every day for four days. One of the days, I mean, every day I pray for the sick because we call it healing or your healing crusade. Once I mention healing, that means healing must happen there. Praise God. So, so we prayed for people. And then this particular one, and I said they should be coming to give testimony. So a woman gave testimony. Wow. He said she had had accidents 32 years ago. When? Eh? 32 years ago, Loti Lassiden, Walopo Yonku, Boto Unoku, Bo Sherry B. Badi, Obadje. So he could not sit down properly with that side and could not you know, sleep on that side and could not walk well for 32 years. And hear me, when we were praying, that's what the power of God can do. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I was just laying hand on head, head, head. And her problem was where? Pelvic leg. I thought only your head. I didn't touch any other place. But you said 32 years, bone problem. Ah, praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not laying on of hand. This is laying on of God, though. 
for somebody with 32 years bone structure problem to be healed by a touch. It's more than a touch. This is God. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The healing power of God works beyond your brain. He's the only one who can do what he alone can do. Hallelujah. The last day of the program, there was a woman that came, an elderly person, came with a walking stick. I collected the stick, I gave to one of my boys, and I prayed. After the prayer, my mom, yeah, let us walk. Ah, my son, I said, mm, <laughs> God has done something. Let's walk now. By the time you took the first step, second, without the stick, she was surprised. She was now excited. So I started dancing. She was dancing, I was dancing. They took the pictures. But eventually when we got back to campus, she works as a lecturer. Somebody saw her walking on the corridor. Excuse me, my excuse me. Ah, are you, did you for anything have to go to your town for, say, yes, 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 any problem? Ah, my mother says some people came to Baptist church home, and they said the wife works in Futa. And he knows that I'm here. So he now said, did you have no somebody? <laughs> Eventually he found out that that woman that was ill was ill of arthritis. The daughter who is a staff in the school knows that my man has arthritis for many years. But the arthritis left by a touch. There is something about the power of God. That power will visit you today in the name of Jesus. It has no limit, no boundary. He can pull you out from wherever dungeon the devil has packed you. Praise God. And when you do that, you will recognize that this is God. Nothing else. And when that happens, the glory will go to him alone. Hallelujah. This woman received the miracle because she believed before coming to church that she will receive. What did you believe before coming for the program? She believes she's going to that program to receive. She believes she will touch. That's her faith. She expressed us the faith by coming. She did more by touching. And she calculated by meditation that he will not need to touch me, but me, I will touch him. Ah, because nobody has done that before. They told her stories of Jesus, how he touched the leper and he was cleansed, touched the blind, it was, but they didn't say somebody touched. But she cook up that by herself. Praise God. And did you know that a miracle became viral? What do I mean by that? All right. Matthew chapter 14. From verse 35. Matthew 14. From verse 35. Let's start from 34. And when they were gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out unto all the country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as toiled, were he were made perfectly whole. Mm. I'll take it again from verse 35. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched, we are made perfectly whole. Praise God. Did you hear? Now, who first touched it was that woman who ever invented the new way of healing touch the master's, master's clothes clothe, clothe, you shall be healed is somebody here others have never done that they wait for jesus to come and touch them he didn't wait for jesus to touch her she decided i will touch him and if I cannot touch his body, I can touch his clothes. And once I touch his clothes, I'll be okay. She developed that new method. But the method has become viral now. Am I talking? Hello? 
In this place, they said, when they had knowledge of him, I say miracle starts from hearing. So the miracle of this place now started from they had knowledge of him. What was the knowledge they had? Man, time for work on Lord John Rio. The woman, you want give testimony a lot of wambi, but bound to walu abayo. Can you catch it? Ya loko, I want to hear Praise God. Um, he didn't intend to come to them. Maybe he was going somewhere else, but I don't want the ship put the land. So I want long be like be odo. So anybody to ban lossy country, I go call land. Lord, I want to lossy be done lot. Want to Joe David on lot and to Koshele. Every part of the country, go and bring the sick. Kilo Koshele. Hey, so for any program or a program, call it late. Any Ganton get program, what you want? Praise God. On Gani program, Tibo Boyan she. What you did? Praise God. Are you hearing me, somebody? The program himself have come. What are we waiting for? On Gani poster, can be on front line. The poster, am I worried? They brought the sick. Excuse me. When that woman got healed, it was one kind of sickness. Thank you, any issue of blood. Yes. These people was it the same sickness they brought? Let's look at it again. Matthew 14. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, or you can help me with another translation. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all the country land they bought and brought unto him. How many people? All that were diseased. Are they diseased with issue of blood? No. Any disease. And besought him that he might only touch the hem of his garment. And how many people touch? As many as thought we are made perfectly whole. Mm. As many as touched. They were made whole of which sickness, whatever sickness. Praise God. But it was this woman that brought that idea. Don't, Don't let, let the man, man finish the message. Just wrap his clothes slow, briefly. briefly. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. So he has given them a viral method of getting the miracle. So when they touch, and the Bible says, as many as touch, except somebody didn't touch, who swear a touch, whatever sickness, he will be healed. Praise God. You know what that means? When we preach well about Jesus, we are trying to create your own hem of garment for you. So you have what to touch. Once you have which of the word of God that this man is saying concerns me, you have gotten something to touch. Once you touch that aspect, your miracle gets to you. It's posted to you directly. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They had knowledge of him. And therefore they brought all sick people. Tomorrow is Sunday. But maybe some people have to change church tomorrow. Tell them something is happening on this side of the town. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You need to let somebody know. Because they don't know. If this news of let's go to town, go bring sick people. If it's only a few people that knew about it, few people will come to where Jesus was. But they did it so well to gather many. And they say as many they brought, as many that taught, all of them we are healed. Now it's not a particular sickness, it's whatever sickness. Praise God. When ministers minister, they minister according to the level of their grace. You can't do more than what God gives you the ability to do. You can preach, but he will be the one to answer and bring a miracle. Praise God. You can see people go to crusade, and a lot of people don't wish he had stand up, but blind people still went home with their eyes. And you can go to a program, and every blind, deaf, and dumb, healed, all lame people still went back with their walking stick. Praise God. It means... There is an area that that man is gifted. There is an area he's not gifted. But we are talking about Jesus now. He is the healer. He has no limit. He has no boundary. His power knows no limit. Your faith is the one that needs to grab him. 
Praise God. Is somebody hearing me today? The testimony of this woman has gone to town to go and make people know that whenever Jesus comes, just look for his clothes. You can grab his clothes, good for you. You got your healing. And they came like that, and all of them touched, and all of them. That's the reason why we give testimonies in church. We give testimony to increase the level of what we have received because she was healed before Jesus Christ said, who touched me? She has been healed. She has felt it in her body that healing has come. So it was already okay. But when she came to Jesus and explained, sorry, I'm the one. I just don't want to worry you, sir. This and this has been the problem. It's a 12 years problem. But as soon as I touch you, because I said before that I, if I get here, I will touch you and I will be made. Oh, I touch you and I already got what I want. Thank you, sir. He said, no, daughter, you go. Your faith has made you whole. When he put the word whole, it's higher than the word heal. Praise God. Ten lepers were cleansed. Only one was made whole. The one that came back to come and give testimony. The others didn't come back because already they are already healed and the, the pastor has already satisfied them. These people are healed. They can go back to their family now. No more further quarantine. Family, you can take your people. Everybody's okay. And they will give the offering that they are supposed to give in church for every leper that become cleansed. That is an offering that you give. So they did all that, and everybody went to their family. But one of them said, it was Jesus that prayed for me. It's not this pastor that is taking offering. Jesus did it. Pastor got the offering. Along by me. Praise God. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? So he now went back to Jesus. You said we should be going. Boy, why pe back any car loss on church at his soul at full of free one? What you bow, Bobo Yachi? I don't see Lonnie Church, but money you can not see BT. Yeah, no tea. That's why I came back, sir. So I said, God, do perform prayer. Jesus Christ said, I thought ten were cleansed. Where are the nine? May you never be part of that nine in Jesus' name. Where are the nine that God healed and kept quiet? We are the nine that God did one down in their land. They say, Me confess or sit down. All on Shea, no first or sit down. You got to share, let's say. She will pass it out, go bunya loba. Praise God. How is it that when he has done miracle, you don't want to come on your mass of where I say you? Eh, she told Shah, I said you took by Sassi and Lara. Oh, so go on, I said you. You want to first of all, go on, say, Yano. Oh, I need to come back so quickly, you know what? Praise God. The only one among the ten that came back to give testimony was the only one that was made whole. To be made whole means you are restored to your original state, where you were before the problem started. Now, for a leper, or what he give, but healed, I remain best, anybody before transmitted, that's all. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? But I let this story pass as a family. But I want to continue to buy Jalalango until it's made whole. The hand will not turn back to what it used to be. That one of Naaman the leper. They said the skin became like what? Like that of a newborn baby. But I make a hole such that what was the condition of your skin before this problem came oh padasi baby skin somebody say baby skin oh so that oh so that oh so that oh so that that means supernatural power of god can make your skin to be like baby skin just shiny soft succulent without any Ointment, praise God. Oh, ni na wo fa wa ra bi ara ya kan ma flow pelu akilo lo ori of your lord. Praise God. Baby skin. Now, let me tell you something about skin, my brother. If you did not study about skin, you don't know that you can use skin to determine what is going on inside the body. The way the skin looks like can tell you what is going on inside the body. So, whosoever is an old man, Naman, a general in the army, 
whose skin became suddenly like that of a baby. Some things have happened to the heart. Some have happened to the lung. Some have happened to the liver. Some have happened to the kidney. It's only you can't see it outside. Because all of them too must turn and become babies. Praise God! That's why the outside will now look like baby skin. Not only baby skin. When you get to its alimentary canal to the baby zone, you get to the heart to the baby zone, you get into the lung to the baby zone, everything to our, oh my God, praise God! Oh, sure, when man, you know, you come back, you come to the baby, you know, you live where, you live where, you don't talk about that, you old, caras, praise God! Our God is a good God. But that's the ability of God. So I'm sure it's only that woman or that man that came and said, you heal me. So I just said I should come and thank you. For giving testimony is the reason for being made whole. To be made whole is that the skin will be restored. Not only that, all that she has spent, the woman of the issue of blood, all that she has spent must be restored back. Because, I the lightning. So Tyson, see over my father, see old. Then the, the, it's not about 12 years problem alone. It's about kidney 12 years eating ball over me. Praise God. What if he has lost the job? The job can come back. What if the husband has left? He has to come back. What if the family has gone? They have to come back. Relationship will come back. Family will come back. Whatever job, profession or, or career will come back. Everything will be restored. That has been made whole. So tomorrow, part of the message will be that we need testimony from those that God has touched within the last two days. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't keep it. Don't say, eh, oh, it's more Oh, she carry more expect color she am to lack but I give the king to us a testimony. Oh, serious. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jesus Christ had thousands of people to feed. Oh, they pray so long. We share all our share around your much. You go all our yano, I say yano. Come on, you're in can't yell on you. Come on, Lord, let no bill. Amen. Oh, yeah, and boys, and our bush in law. One in car, the only good thing can come back. And can I feel more delayed by our boy can. Mommy, I follow you and could get and put in a bank one message in by me. My baby, baby, baby. Praise God. So, Baba yen lo nje to muwa lati leko iti je. So yen la ri muwa sa. She le ri kan she se le. You know where I'm going? Compared to what they need, that thing is infinitesimal. A boy's meal compared to thousands of people. To ba she kan lara iwo ni. Pa kan wo she to strong, to gun. I'm bidding can give you more on your mother. Oh, Lenya, I bought Ram on your mother. What you want to say? Come, come. In your face, young Bobo Bunge, boy, get it. Yes, no, she bell. Only so far, can't you go only fifty by fifty, five by five? I joke, I joke. On that day, kill a bell on your own, eh? Praise God. That means, oh, do perfume on Tokere along what saw that. That's the way of God. When you see something small, don't despise the day of little beginning, celebrate it. And then greater one will come. Are you getting what I'm saying? Celebrate the day of your little beginning. More will come. Celebrate the little you have seen from God. More will come. Celebrate the one he did last time. More will come. Celebrate the one that has happened in the morning. More will come. Don't say, oh, I was expecting something big. I didn't know it's only this small. Ah. Praise God. So Jesus gave thanks. For the little boy's meal, and he started breaking it, and the thing did not finish. It did not finish. It did not finish. You know the one I like about it? When he divided it briefly, he gave to the twelve, by a test of faith. <laughs> Praise God. But somehow, Bobo won't look key to the flow. The key to the flow. Praise God. 
the king to it so bow no she mbu o de mbu no ah ya no re oyo ya gbe wa gbe wa kini and the thing was spreading because everybody had faith I don't know whether Judas Iscariot was there then. I don't know. I don't know whether Thomas was there, Didymus. I don't know. But I know everybody that got it from Jesus, he broke in their hand. Your miracle will break in your hand. What you expect from God will turn out in your hand. It won't get to you and the miracle will not work. Only have you forgotten the miracle of the loaves? How many thousands came, how many, how much little food we had, and how God fed them, and how much of baskets we took after 12. Have you forgotten the miracle of the loaves? You shouldn't forget what I have done. That is what we give you another. Praise God. Are you hearing me? God is a wonder-working God. When he has done little, don't call it little, my brother. Celebrate it. Celebrate it so well. If you celebrate it, God will make it to amplify. Celebrated a little meal. 5,000 gen one. Are you getting what I'm saying? Everything you have from God, worship him, celebrate him, thank him. Before you finish thanking, more will come. Praise God. Are you hearing me? So he's fed the 5,000 with that supernatural flow. And uh, what happened? You know the leper that was cleansed, all right? And then he came back and gave the testimony. The first one that was cleansed was only one. Matthew chapter 8 was only one. Are you getting what I'm saying? But after he, he, that one, there was one that was not sure. Wait, I don't know whether you can, you can heal me, but I know you have the power to heal me, but whether you are willing to... I said, I'm willing. I'm always willing to heal you. So come here. He touched him and he was made whole. And then he went out giving testimony to others. So I'm sure it is that one. The testimony will go to church. The priest will certify that he's already healed. So they will send him back to the family. Then everybody that had the testimony in church, when she came to give the offering in church, they have had the testimony. So they will go and say it to all others. After that, I believe that people that are in lepers colony, ibe lati leri awon to to bi mewa, idi le ka o le ni leper mewa lo ni jara buruti o da. Are you getting what I'm saying? So only be time ko won si ni ibe na ti le pe mewa. Mhm. So when he now got there, news yen came to them. You know what happened at church today? <laughs> Mr. Ojo, that used to have this and this ah He's back in the family now. The family are rejoicing. It's no more in Nepal. He just came to church that God has done a miracle. And they learned our pastor check it and they say everything is okay. We celebrate. I even ate there when they were thanking God. They gave everybody food I ate. Honestly, he's a, he's a huge man now at all. Eh. So the people in the colony now had the news. So any can tell the wo I sometimes or quick go gulara why. And can tell the wo to le wo to walu. Ah, kill and say. Praise God. Are you So he Hey, boys, am I worried? I'm sure I'm containing so that I just me and you go and oh serious. Or go lay la ni go dani kan lo. I don't know ni. Come on, my heal. I don't my heal. No ni. Do you believe in heal? Can heal? But only what for? Fun testimony for me. I don't dem. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So all of them decided nobody will go for me. I'm go by myself. And they all came to Jesus. The last one, Jesus touched them. This one because faith want to grow, could touch one. Oni eh ki lele fe ri mi fun e ri ba se ri ni baba ani yi ta gbo pe se fun yan kan lojo bi mi lo kan e se ru e fa wa na eh baba se fa wa na praise god jesus guy said to that we fit am late to high oni the problem oni mi ti ani dey touch in e kan turn man eh eh mo ni ka ko gbiji sa e ma lo so do priest go and tell him that you are made whole. Ask so I want to continue saying, "Can you shake? 
ke mo wo wa ke fun olowo yen o ke fun olofrin won ma je o si yin lorun o e gba be olorun lo fo to ni da yo ayo ni ke ba lo le gbogbo won de lo be praise god but what is my point testimony of one person brought 10 more so ojo to ba ti shalai give testimony e o ti je ki 10 padanu ko 10 ti wa to ni ru nkan to n se yen to n se won na ta n ba gbogbo olorun le se awon gan bo ta pe n bo olorun ti ba se na eri ai boni describe u sida fun mi ah i mean bo bi ti fi da wa mo mo ile mo mo ile ba ti si won be methodist wa ni awon kan wa lagere awon kan wa ni mi bo e wo lo sida nbe eri abi bai bai ni okay se meto de be ah ah o sin ka ti o de be mo ti o de be mo ti o de be ese de be okay praise god they will all come because they want to know she alone to see she she could see be to to le she see hey praise god oh my god are you hearing what i'm saying once they know god is alive there his ability is working there they will come and when they follow you there you want to joke say I call my pray for one, Baba God, but you come and do. And you can wash your hands for one. Meet you while I am being held. Wash your hands. I want to bless you again. When you come to Kosiri, I want you. I want to move on here. Olu, I wash your hands for one. Praise God. You know that Philip brought Nathaniel to Jesus, but that's all that Philip did. Kofelo, and anything good come out of Nazareth, Emi Omo told him once when he said, "Bami Debe." When you get there, come and see. Lots of people just come and see. And when he got there, Jesus did not speak to Philip. Jesus just looked at Nathaniel, Nathaniel, Nato, Nato, <laughs> Nati, Nati. <laughs> you are a Jew, a serious Jew of the highest order. Ah, ah, ah. Before this man spoke to you, when you are under the fig tree, Motiria, before him discuss, boya wa wa abo ni wa mowe. Yes, hello, Julia. To be told, Debe. I beg your Messiah. Oh, we re. Praise God. Oh my God. Jesus Christ said, "The little thing I said, has He taught you so well like that? Ah, you will yet see more. You will see the Son of Man. Enter into another. Life. You have come to the right place. Oh, to so quick. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? What should you call me? Coloma." Finally, praise God. You know, it was Andrew that first saw Jesus. He went and told Peter, Peter, Old Testament, New Today, Ah, and you can dance in Miracle Tonche, Old Chubomo City, Tonshawan Yano, a little licking. Bonnie, Mamma Debe Yalo Yalo. When Peter came, ko ijoko ti ba ti jesu ni mm mm so fast so fast you are like a reed i'm going to change your name today you just look like a reed you are never stable you are always going here and there but today i'll make you a rock and all that ah but you didn't know me much no i know you since the day of creation praise god are you get what i'm saying you knew he became a leader much more than andrew why Somebody has brought him, but he became more useful than the person that brought him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have a job to do between today and tomorrow. You must bring more people. Just tell them. I was preaching in Nadeyemi College of Education in Nundo some years back. And then somebody came to the meeting on Saturday like that, like today. And uh, they said, the pastor said I should help pray for the person. By the time I was praying for the person, he said, I don't do cancer. I don't like talking to people after pastors should talk to their members. I just come to preach. I'm going back to my place. But eventually I consented because all the pastors wanted me to pray. Okay, I listen. Now brought a child. And the child was somebody like uh, maybe some years old who should be walking and playing around. But it's not growing. So he's still carrying or oh, maybe four years or something. Carrying at the man. Ah! So something, I don't know what they call it. Now you wear Sabi grammar, Sabi all those things. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay? Maybe stunted growth or, or whatever. They have some name. They get Down syndrome. Uh -huh, that kind of thing. And by the time the woman finished all that she was saying, I didn't hear my spirit what to pray for her. So I now said, Madam, uh, you know what? If you can come tomorrow. Tomorrow is Sunday. Hmm? 
I'll see whether God will want me to pray for you or not. But right now, I don't feel any anointing to pray for you. So you have to go now, and then you come tomorrow. Tomorrow, you know, I'll teach you. But I'll be lola, I'll teach you lola, I'll teach you lola. Since I'm still coming tomorrow. Say this is not my church. Eh, eh, I'm not going to problem. I'm not going to see It's not by two lads. I mean, it's a pastor, pastor, long one member. And my last church, you call it what you are saying, you better make us who are not. What about bye? Praise God. The next day she came, which was Sunday. But not only that, a minute by 3 a.m., God woke me up. Nipa, Moti, oh, well, I'm not a pray for you. Then, so story of me, long after many revelations, deep revelation. To what did the lab be? mommy, show me, can't let me I saw from a poor Nicaragua. What to be at me if I could be like one wa waku wakri, lofiri rikuri. All of nobody's around. Me must story life from a launch and from any download. Be a one year, or be anyone, a utopi, or corny, boy, be kibi lottery. On low one look, kiri yo, and yoku, very low where I yell one down one problem. A uto wala and yellow are laying yo. So me, bone where you bass so could you and me, bone image down, lana. In the spirit, I didn't hear anything about her. I didn't hear anything. I said, sir, hear anything. I said, sir, I didn't 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 hear anything. I said, So you would think I'm very hard. I said, sir, I didn't hear anything. More hard to do alone. No, my heart. Praise God. <laughs> I will be. Straightforward to him that is straightforward, and I will be crooked to him that is crooked. That's God. So you can't pick it. So all of I speak God for me. But he now gave me a scripture. Only I heard the voice of the Lord. But the Lord. And so you are going to pray for that child, and I will heal the child, but I will use the child as a miracle working evangelist. Praise God. On the condition, we mommy, I can't pray for any color sorry or talk about me that my game. Oh my, you tell by he leo, you should share for you. What did you buy? And come as a bit of glory, I quit that once you're messing. Caras, I'm a real much better than messing. Look, we can make a lot of jack and say, Come up, but they work with you. Is that good? Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my, a lot of my father, a lot of my own fellow, one sucker. He will just turn back to where he's coming from. Praise God. So he said, Tell the, the mother to make a covenant, but I will heal the child. And I prayed after. Praise God. That's a supernatural parable. To turn what looks impossible to become possible. It doesn't matter how far the devil has gone, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly far and above. Whatever anybody can do. Stand up, we are praying. Tomorrow, make sure you are here on time and tell anybody God is walking now in Sida, Karas, Andoli, Keko, Balasi, Andreke, Shito, Rabiada. God is here and the power is here to heal, to deliver the oppressed. He will remove the burden, He will remove the yoke, and you shall be made free. Of whatever sickness or disease in your body. I want you to talk to God tonight. I believe you have heard from Him very clearly. You talk to Him. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration. We bless your holy name, eternal rock of ages. We worship you. We worship. We worship you. The God of yesterday, the God of today, the God of tomorrow. The God of another chance. The God of another chance. The God of another chance. He has come at a time. You didn't get it very clearly then. But he has come again today. The God of another chance. He has given you an opportunity in the time past. But maybe you didn't use it very well. But he has come to give you another opportunity again today. The God of another chance. That God will always give you a way where the seas there is no way. He has come with a new wave for you. A new wave of his power and glory flowing in the house all through this weekend. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. 
as we are standing, let's just bow down our head. If you are there tonight and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior at any time, and you are coming here tonight, you have had some stuff that touched your spirit, and you want to say, Lord Jesus, save my soul. I don't want to continue the way I've been living before. I need you to come into my life. I need you to come into my life. I need you to give me a new beginning. I need to become a member of the family of God. I need to stop all this kind of life I'm living. I need God. I need you, Lord. If that's your prayer, you want God to save your soul, I'd like to pray with you. Again, if you have been in God before, but for whatever reason, you have stepped back from following him. We have been following him for a long time, but there's no reason for regrets. There's no reason to go back. There's no other place we can go to but him, and him forever. But have you tasted of his glory? And for one reason or the other, you went back. Maybe some sin took advantage of you. And then some negative things started happening. Your graph was no more going up. It was coming down. Today, you can come back to him from your backsliding state. And you can be restored unto him perfectly. So I want you to also join them. So whether you are getting saved for the first time, or you've been with him, and then you have gone back, you want to come again back unto God. Lift up your hand wherever you are. You want me to pray for you for salvation? For a return ticket back unto God, the Savior, the owner of your life, the source and fountain of your life. You've been away from him for a long time, but you want to come back today. You say, Jesus, I want to have a new beginning. I want to have a new life. Can you raise up the hand? Please make it up of your head. I want to be sure I can see you before I pray. Yes, yes, yes. I didn't say use the hand to cover your face. Raise it up above your head. Then I, I can know where you are coming from. And I'll be able to pray for you. Anyone in the front, at the back, in the middle, wherever. Jesus, you want to accept. You want to live above sin and have a new beginning in your life. Thank you, Father. Anyone hearing the sound of my voice from anywhere across the nations of the world and you want to come to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight to save your soul, I want you to follow me in the following prayers. I will lead and then you follow. Lord Jesus, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask that you save me from my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Cross my name from the book of sinners. Give me a new beginning. Give me the power to live above sin. The power you gave to that woman and you said go and sin no more. And she could not sin after all. Lord, give me the same. Give me a new beginning. Let me start afresh with you. And then wherever sin has had dominion over me, let me have dominion over sin. And give me the power that will live above that. In the name of Jesus. Any sickness in your body, God is also healing you along with that. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone that has prayed that prayer with me, Lord, I ask, According to your word, no man comment unto you. You will not cast them out. That means you will take them in. Take them in. Write their name in the book of life. Give them a new beginning as they have asked for. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Number two, you have any sickness in your body? Tonight is the last night. Tomorrow is going to be morning program. You have the opportunity yesterday... You're going to have that opportunity again at this time. You are there. You have any sickness at all in your body. I'd like you to come forward. I'm going to pray for you. It's going to require a touch. Touch the hem of his garment. Or he touch you. But you need contact and transfer. Once he touch you, it's an outstretch of the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. Something happened to you that is beyond ordinary. I don't know what the sickness is. I don't know what the infirmity is. But you do. But the anointing of the Lord has power to reach out and deal with whatever the issue is with the virtue that comes from the throne and the virtue that comes from the vein of Emmanuel. He's going to touch you tonight and you will have a living testimony. We'll be here together tomorrow. You will have a living testimony that after that touch, God did this and that in my life. Now, if you are there, I want you to come forward. I'm going to pray for you. Whether one or two or three. Let's do that. Briefly. Thank you. God bless you. I will just be very